Yeah. 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 Take one. Hi, Ira. Can you talk a little bit about what it was like to grow up here in Enfield in the 60s? Well, Gail, I would have to go back to maybe to the 50s when I uh, was uh, down uh, living in the country. And that was, I could only go back up to when I was uh, about six, year, uh, six years old and my grandmother had died and mom. Aunt, she actually came uh, to the country and uh, she took me and I started staying with her. And at that time, it was probably, 19, it was probably 1953 when I started staying with her. And uh, uh, I can always remember on that street, it was uh, the name of the street, it was Dixie Street. And to me, that was the actually the best place of my life. I, uh, I would say that uh, that's where I, I probably had my, uh, uh, I learned everything, I would say, basically during that time. And I, from, my, from staying with my aunt, I guess I, uh, I got all my values and everything else that I probably needed to succeed in life. And the good thing about that was that it was, uh, uh, it was more, that was a black neighborhood. And at that time, basically, the, uh, the city of Enfield was basically, it was mostly black and white. And it, by me living on that, we call that uh, Newtown. Enfield was what, well, that part of Enfield was uh, called Newtown. And then there was another part of the infield that was called Black Bottom, and I guess that's where all the, what you'd say, the people that were called uh, basically poor, and they lived on that, and that was like, it was called Cross the Tracks. And then we had what you call the downtown of infield here, and that was more where the white people lived. And during the, maybe during that time, most of us, we basically remember, we remember things like uh, stores that you either went to the white part of the store or, or where the white people were served, or you went into a store that was served, that they only served black. And that, that was one of the, one of the stores like that, it was called the Friendly Grill. And basically people like, uh, that uh, if you wanted a nice barbecue sandwich or something like that, you would go there, or you wanted a beer, you would go there to get something. But you knew what part of that store you had to go to. You, you either went to the white, if you were white, you went in the white, and if you were black, you went to the black. And it was the same way with even, even bathrooms, definitely bathrooms or water fountains, they even had those. Uh, so during that time, that's what, you know, you'll always remember that. And I guess maybe it was uh, during, during that time, it, everything seemed, seemed fine to me because I'm just growing up. But if you were a grown person, maybe it might have looked different. But as a, as a young person growing up in Enfield, that was fine with me because I could, you know, I didn't mind. I was just having a good time because all I was doing was, I'd go, you know, like I say, Dixie Street was my street and I'd go to the park every day. And I always remember going to the park because my aunt, she ran the park. And she was the type of person that, you know, she was a very athletic person and she could do anything. And she loved kids. I mean, she she just loved to teach kids how to play games. And then by her being a teacher, she always would correct you on anything that you would say that might be wrong or inappropriate. And uh, those are the things that I remember about that. And I guess maybe when I got in the, uh, started in the 60s, that's when, uh, I think integration started coming in, and then... Hold on just a second. I'm sorry that <laughs> we lost this.
<laughs> so the light switched off in the back. Okay. Um, do you want me to stay back there and run around? I can do it. I have no problem. Just got a bunch of cords. Okay. All right. So did we look? Do you have to like cut out the part where the light went out? Um. It. It it'll be okay, cause I I could always just put on B roll. Okay. On that spot and come right back to when the light is on. Okay. We're still recording, so you you can continue. It's okay. Okay. And doing the doing the sixties, maybe around sixty one or sixty two, we actually had a meeting, I believe. And this meeting actually took place in uh, Miss Johnson, Willa Johnson uh, house. And they were talking about uh, integration or what they should integrate here. And I think the things that they decided upon was we, would, uh, we wanted the movie to be integrated. Mm -hmm. And the way, I, the way the movie worked down here was that the blacks were in the upstairs of the, on the upstairs uh, level of the movie and the whites were on the black uh, on the bottom down there and for some reason they wanted uh, they wanted to integrate that but of course during that time and a movie was not the, the manager of the movie was not gonna let the uh, no integration at that time it wasn't gonna be like the whites were gonna be being mixed with the blacks so we actually started um, started picking the, the movie. And uh, I remember uh, uh, as we were walking around picking it in the movie, some of the white kids, they started, they threw up eggs upside the movie, which if you would now, an uh, egg would hit the movie, uh, hit the brick and bounce back. Of course, it, you know, you'd end up by us walking close to the outside where the brick was the uh the egg would back you know be it would land back on us it would splatter back on us and that's that's uh they did that just about every time we would pick at the movie but they never did uh they never did integrate that movie in fact they actually closed the movie down before it actually got integrated at all so they uh that uh, ended the integration of that, and then after they tried to integrate that, then they we uh, tried to uh, do some of the stores that weren't actually hiring any black people to work in them. And I think the Five and Dime store was one of them, and there was a few other stores that they tried to pick it and open up where they could, where they would hire, where the stores would hire some black people to work in them. And in a few cases, some of the stores did give in, and I think one of them was called MacPhail Store, MacPhail Clothing Store. That gave they gave they started hiring some younger kids to work in those on like on the weekends, and uh, it was only about one or two that did at that time. But most of the most of the stores at that time, if anybody worked at them, they were basically the white people, and. Uh, that went on, and then, like, uh, then uh, the integration it became more intense. We would actually start marching on some of the streets where we would have uh, rallies down here in town. And I do remember at one time they uh, the uh, they put the water hose on us and actually pulled us from off off the streets and bought us and locked us up in the jails here and uh, we stayed basically maybe at least a half a night and half a night to one of some of the uh, lawyers that the civil rights workers had they came and bailed us out but basically at, uh, that was about the uh, that was about the most I can remember about the uh, the integration uh, some some of the kids, they I'm quite sure some of the kids they did get uh, uh, the cops did kind of mistreat some of them, but I can't say I wasn't one of the ones that got mistreated, so mm -hmm. I don't remember anything uh, besides that. And then the next thing I do remember is that during during the uh, 1964, that was when we first decided uh, they decided they were going to integrate the schools. 
and I was one of the first ones that they picked to integrate the schools. Uh, so I, uh, I went over to uh, the white school uh, from 1964 to 1966, but up until then I was, uh, I was going to uh, M. Borden School, and I went from, from M. Borden School, I went from there from the 1st through the 11th grade, and uh, uh, after that, uh, my last two years, I did spend in a white school, and I did, uh, I graduated from uh, Enfield High in 1966. And uh, that's about as far as I can go remembering anything about Enfield, because after that, I was, uh, I, got, I was the first one that got drafted out of there, mm -hmm. drafted into the Army at that time from Enfield. And actually, during that time, it was your local board that that uh, picked you to be, be drafted. And I always blame, I said, maybe that's what, why they picked me to go to go into the military. I said, because I was one of the ones that went to the white school. But, I, but I'm not sure whether that was true or not. But uh, I, uh, I did, I was the first one to get drafted out of that. And uh, like I say, that was, that's about all I can remember on uh,